Hello everybody and welcome back to TMI, the podcast that isn't a podcast with your host, Imogen Horton. Hello, actually doing that thumb, that drum situation. I was watching this girl, G Flip. She's with Chriselle Staus. Staus, is that how I say it? She's married to her from Selling Sunset. And oh my gosh, she is so cool. She did a cover of Taylor Swift. Oh, why don't I know it? What a shape of the body is feeling a god is it's a what is it? It's a cool summer is you da 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 and she does this thing on TikTok where she like copies she's like lip syncing to her own song where she's playing the drums and she's going like this and I'm like I wanna play the drums. I actually want to play the drums. I think I'd be so sick in it because it was like, if you're not watching this, then you won't see this, but I'll try and do the... I'd be so good at it. I remember once when I was younger, my agent said to me, you have got to be prepared for all things and you've got to be prepared to just lie. So I remember a girl that was on my agency, she had an audition for I think it was like a Nintendo something at the time where they had a drum kit attached to it and it was an advert for the drum kit that plugged into like the Nintendo or the Wii or whatever it was and she had to play it anyway she went in there and they were like it was like a group audition kind of thing at the very beginning and she said to me this is how he wants you to be and he was telling us the story as well how when she was in there they said can anyone play the drums and she was like yeah me She'd never played the drums in her life. She didn't know how to play the drums. But it had to be that mentality of like, I want to be the first person you watch. I'm confident. Here, look at me. So she got up there. She actually got it in the end. I'm pretty sure she got it. And she'd never played the drums, but I don't think it was the biggest deal. Um, But they were like, okay, sit in front of this drum kit and really go for it. I mean, it's like the air guitar guitar competition I won when I was in year eight. (sighs) Mr. Herbert. Tim Herbert, I think his first name was. He did give it to me in my form. I did win the best air guitar. I actually got up on the on the chairs and tables. This was before I left that school because I was so badly bullied. <laughs> but it was fine. I was absolutely going for it. Was it year seven? I think it was year seven when I was actually love. I was actually loving life. I liked it in year seven. Year eight, I absolutely hated my life. And I was signed off by the doctor, and that's another story. But we go into that. I I digress. I definitely digress. But yeah, just thinking about how good she was at the drums, I was like, oh, imagine like your children loving the drums. It'd be so loud. But then I'm loud. So I would be able to tolerate it probably. Um, But just so cool. Like anyone that plays an instrument, anyone that does anything, I just think they're sick. What's been going on for me this week? Quite a lot. I have to tell you this. I have to tell you this. You'll laugh, you'll laugh, you'll laugh. Well, I hope you'll laugh. If not, you'll cry. I actually... (laughs) I was invited on a brand call so I got really I got a really exciting campaign through it was amazing it was on TikTok it was for something that's I'll tell you and I'll explain it to you but it's an amazing campaign anyway this part isn't sponsored or anything nothing is here sponsored obviously not um just me and my little microphone chilling I should turn it around shouldn't I it's a bit of a boring side oh sorry if this is going to affect it though if I turn it around like that just think that looks way better on my makeshift tripod That is my suction car cup phone mount. I got one for my dad as well when he does his drives to Hungary. So I got this really exciting um, campaign through and they basically wanted to have like a big Zoom call with everyone to explain the brief and talk through it and just us to ask any questions, etc. So it's me and my manager and then loads of other influencers and they were recording the whole thing to be able to send it to the influencers that couldn't be on the Zoom call. So this very moment is logged. I'm sure the agencies, I don't blame them if they're sitting back at this laughing on their staff party thinking, who is this absolute wonderful head case? Two magpies love you so much. So anyway, they were like, okay, so has anyone got any questions? They did the whole, they did the whole thing and there's me like welling up. So basically, let me give a pre, let me give the pretense of what the whole thing is about. So it was with Dove, and Dove were doing this campaign to speak to the face of 10. So they're basically saying that at the moment, children as young as 10 
one in four children as young as 10 is feeling judged about their skin and they're feeling insecure about how they look um, because of skincare brands promoting certain things that are making them feel like they need to use anti-aging products like they're using retinol at the age of 10 their skin is perfect and it's young and it shouldn't have anything like that on it and it's just so much pressure nowadays with social media and anyway it was really touching me because I was like oh my god I have two young girls the thought that they ever will feel like that made me feel physically sick and just made me feel so sad that one in four young girls actually are feeling this way that they want to wear anti-aging products that they feel judged about their skin that they're feeling insecure and you know, when I was 10, it, I never felt like that. Don't get me wrong, I felt insecure in my life. But like, the age of 10 to feel like that, that really, it really hurt me because I love social media. How can I say anything about it? I'm on it. It's my job and I love it. But just, just the thought of that, how much pressure it is for young girls. Like, we had Bebo and I wasn't even that much on that. We had MySpace, but I wasn't allowed to be on that. But I was on Bebo. I was sharing the love. My parents were very strict with the amount of time we had like the laptop was in the dining room by the kitchen me and my older brother only had a certain amount of time that we were allowed on it we were talking about it the other day actually and like we had like dial-up broadband where we were like making noise you know and I just think now there's so much accessibility unfortunately for children to just feel so I don't know insecure yeah insecure and comparison is the thief of joy and I just I don't know I'd like to think I'd try and limit social media when my children get older. But it's so impossible now because it's everywhere. Oh no, I've only got four, mi four minutes of memory card left. Can I do two separate clips? Right, I'm going to end this clip. I'm going to end this clip and then I'll come back to you. Just to prove I'm not editing. No editing. I'm just going to end this clip now. Hello and welcome back. I'm really sorry about that little technical error. I spoke with our management. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah excellent okay if we can just make sure that doesn't happen next time thank you um but no but sorry about that i just i leave it running i just talk but yes four minutes on memory card i've deleted stuff so fingers crossed we're all good for another 25 minutes sorry if it's a long video but here we go so yes i just feel like very passionate about the fact that i would love to live a lifestyle like my parents brought us up in you know they were quite strict they were quite when everyone else got the night blazers night blazers they weren't back then but when everyone else got the Abercrombie top at school, like we had to wait to go to America. My parents would save up for that one holiday. We'd go on the holiday. We'd go to the outlets. But bearing in mind, going to America back then was way cheaper than it is now. And it was like two to, the dollar was one, two to a pound or something. So everything was half price. We'd go to the outlets. We'd get things that was so much cheaper. And, and then we'd have it. And I'd always have it like two terms later than everyone else. But I loved that. And I just feel like it's such a hard thing to navigate. But anyway, going back to the Dove thing. So I'm on the call. Sorry, I really do go off on tangents. It's just because my brain, I'm speaking about something and then I'm like, this would work with the story. I should tell them this part. So I will go back to the story. So Dove. Yes, I was on the Zoom call. And they were like, has anyone else got any questions? So bearing in mind, my eyes have been welling up while they've been talking about the campaign. So I was like, oh my God, this is such a big thing. Like, oh my goodness, as if this is actually happening. Children are feeling like this. And then they said, has anyone got any questions? And I was just like, can I just say, I just want to say that I can't, I can't actually get over it. I can't reenact it because I was, I was, I was fucking crying. I was fucking crying. I was actually crying. I fucking cried to a brand, all these influencers I don't know. I have no idea like who they are. They're from all over the world. They have amazing followings on their own, you know, like, and it was being recorded and I'm crying so people can replay this over and over again. Maybe it'll make themselves feel better about themselves because they're not me and it might be better. And maybe they're like, at least I'm not Imogen. Um, so then I'm, I was crying. I was like, I just want to say, like, this is honestly such an incredible... Sorry, I'm going to cry. I'm actually going to cry. <laughs> Thank God I had my manager on there because I feel like just having her in there made me feel better. Because she said that she did actually well up a little bit from me getting like that because she's amazing. But I was like... Oh my goodness, what am I doing? I was like, thank you so much for like getting me involved in this. I think it's amazing. Um, I can't believe people feel like this. Like having daughters myself, I can't imagine them feeling like this. And I just broke down. Am I okay? Am I actually okay? And then I was like, let's blame the postpartum hormones because I did give birth six months ago. But <laughs> really, it's not the hormones. It's just me. Can you cope? Like I know anyone that's been watching me for a long time will know 
that that is me. And I know that you guys will be watching it thinking, yeah, all right, standard Imogen. But I just, I just can't hold it in. It's so annoying. I've got to show you this because I actually put this up on Instagram. I'm not being rude and going on my phone, but I actually put this up on Instagram um, the other day and it had such an amazing response and I felt like I wanted to share it with you guys. So there's this trend going around where it's like social media is so fake. So here's some unglamorous things about me. So this is the first thing I put. I have hardly any friends and I've never been someone's best friend except my husband's. I've always been on the outside of cliques. I've never been someone's number one friend. I sometimes think it's maybe because I'm too much or maybe because I actually keep everyone at some kind of a distance. I'm going to go through them all with you because I feel like it's... Yeah, so many people reached out and they were like, that's me. I couldn't relate to anything anymore. Like some people related to some, some of the photos. Some of them didn't relate to some of them. So yeah, I just wanted to speak about it. So I've never been like, even though admittedly, I have, very, I have I have lovely, amazing friends, but I feel as though they've got their own units and I'm always on the outside and I don't know whether I do that subconsciously because I'm a bit awkward or like, I can't explain it. Like, do I keep them at a distance? And also do they, you know, because they have their friends. Like, I am a bit of a loner and I look at my parents. And I love my parents so much. They're like social butterflies, but also... They are really similar. And so is my older brother. Like, we're just a bit... I don't know, because I'm so... Love talking to people. Like, if I met you guys in the street, I would adore speaking to you. But I feel like I'm always... They've got their one best friend, and then it's Imogen. And that's amazing, because I still... I'm lucky to have friends. But I don't actually... I have about three friends. Maximum. If that. And, like, I don't see them all the time, because they live far away from me. So... Like, I see my friends... I, I see my friends a lovely amount, considering I have two babies, a family, and work. But I don't, like, go out every week with my friends or, like... And I just... I don't know. If I really unpacked it, I could really go into it. I think it's something I might... If anyone is feeling that way, like... I think it's something I will probably talk about in another podcast. Just really cover it. Or I could just cover it today. But I want to speak about all of them. Yeah. Mm, I could just speak about that. Oh, now I don't know. Should I read you them? I'll read you them. Next one. I'm two different people completely. People don't believe me when I say I actually get really shy sometimes. I just know how to mask and hide it. I'm an extrovert and an introvert, and it's really hard to fully explain it. I love being the centre of the ten- of attention, but I also, at the same time, I literally get so much anxiety inside. I'm loud and confident, but also such a ball of anxiety. I love talking. I love being funny, but I also love getting out of situations early, like leaving parties before anyone else, so I don't have to do the awkward goodbyes, because that gives me anxiety. The thought of being... Oh, okay, there we go. Definitely nearly nearly got copy, you know what. Um, yeah, like, I love being loud. I am. I go somewhere and I'm like, I have it in me to just be a performer. But then also, before I get into that party or that situation, I've told you this before, I'm, like, dying inside. I'm like, they're going to hate me. I'm going to be so boring. What if it goes quiet? I will say one thing, my children have definitely made me a bit calmer in that sense, like before I go into something, I'm more like, I don't give a fuck so much now, but I am two different people completely, like, I've got an event coming up on Thursday, and I'm really, really nervous about it, because I think I'm going to have to go on my own, the girl I was meant to be going with, I don't think she's going anymore, and I know I'm going to see people at the event, but it's a massive event, and will I really bump into them, I don't know, so it's a gala for like to know it and the fact that I've even been invited because I don't even really do like affiliate links and stuff I do it sometimes but I don't do it half as much as I used to back in the day and also I don't do it half as much as the people that have probably been invited and like there's some really really amazingly big people that have invited and I'm like really big imposter syndrome in this situation where I'm like how have I actually been invited and I just feel so nervous about it but I know when I go there I'm gonna be loud, say hello to people, go in there, make some people laugh, be nice and be a kind person and then hopefully leave a good impression and then go home early. Like I'm planning to be there for about an hour and a half because I've got to get back to my babies. Like this is a really big thing because this will be the first time that I've left them both when they're awake. Yeah, when they're both awake. Um, together so Spencer and my dad and Hugo's actually going to be here to be fair I'm gonna have to leave at about 4 30 to get there for half six which means I'll miss like two feeds of Oreo Bellas so I'm pumping 
to get those feeds off for Spencer to give her a bottle. And she takes a bottle now. She takes this Tommy Tippy bottle. She takes a bottle. It's amazing. It's really positive because it means that I know that she'll have the milk. And then I'm going to have to leave an extra feed just in case I don't get back. Let's say I stayed there for a longer time and didn't get back for 10 o'clock, which I probably won't get back for 10 o'clock, actually. I'll probably get back for about 11. I need three feeds worth of milk. So that's about 120 times three. So that's about 360 millilitres of milk. But I know that when I get there, I'll be fine. But the whole train journey, the whole underground journey, like I'd really rather not get a train and an underground. I was meant to be driving up with this girl, but I don't think we're going to be able to now because I've got a pump while I'm there so I will have to pump on the train so I'm gonna have to take a really big bag when I wanted to take like a little clutch it's a gala so I've got this red house of CB dress coming I don't know if I'm gonna fit it. it hasn't arrived yet it's Monday now and I'm going on Thursday I don't know if I was gonna fit it I've got no other backups um it hasn't arrived yet so I'm really apprehensive about that I might just have to order something tonight just to have something here but house of CB won't get here in time um and I'm gonna have to wear a pump I'm going to have to take my pump, make sure it's charged, and pump <laughs> while I'm at a gala. But the thing is, if you miss that feed, like, I will be away from her for about six hours, seven hours. I feel like, well, I know, they need that feed. So if I miss that feed, I'll be engorged. But also, I need to keep that supply there. So that is that. So I'm a bit apprehensive about how it's all going to work. And I know the whole journey, I'm going to be so apprehensive. I'm just going to be so, like, what if I don't know anyone? What if no one speaks to me what if I don't go to the right people who's going to take a photo of me because I want to get a photo obviously I want to get a photo to of my me and my dress like I never get dressed up I'm gonna to have to go up on the train with my pin curls on so like things like that like confident about that don't give a shit about what anyone thinks of me if they're looking at me like laughing but I will care all the way on the train about how I'm gonna feel when I get in there make up all these random stupid situations that are never gonna happen in my head and then when I get there, I'll be fine. And then I'll leave early because I don't like being there for too long. So I feel like I'm, I can go, okay, bye. Thank you. See you later, everyone. Okay, next slide. I hated my early 20s. Hated them. Even though if you'd probably seen me, you'd think, oh, I was thriving. I really wasn't. I look back now and it honestly makes me feel sad. I was lonely. I didn't know who I was. I hated my jobs. I had so many friends, but they were all just clubbing mates. I hated men, but deep down I prayed I'd find my prince. I wasn't comfortable in my body or my skin. I was so unwell in my 20s, my early 20s, in and out of hospital with my stomach condition. I think it was so pivotal that that all happened and everything happens for a reason. But I hated my 20s, my early 20s, until I met Spencer, actually. Not because he defined my happiness, but when I met him, I was in a good place. So when I met him I was able to open up my heart to him because I was in a good place I just I I didn't like being single even though I said to everyone like I love being single no of course I didn't I'm a, I'm a homebody I love cuddles I love kisses I love affection like I didn't have sex for a really long time I missed sex but then I forgot what it was kind of like and until I'd maybe like have like a kiss with someone and I'd be like oh god but then I wouldn't want to have sex with anyone because I was like whoa if I have sex with you you have to be my boyfriend because it'd been so long it felt like I was losing my virginity all over again so yeah it was just oh, I hated my 20s I hated I just hated it I hated my university yeah I just really wasn't happy I could definitely go into every single one of these for so long if you want me to talk about like university and like why I hated university then I would definitely speak all about that because I feel like these podcasty things that aren't podcasts are just really my way of like telling stories. It's basically story times, but it's just a bit all over the place. But yeah, that that was that one. I was bullied a lot growing up. One school so intensely that the doctor had to sign me off from going to school. And I was homeschooled by my dad for one year before I joined another school. I was bullied so badly. Like, obscene. Obscene. It was vile. If I really, like, yeah, I've, if I really deeped it, like, I spoke to my neighbour about it the other day because I went to a private school where I was really badly bullied. I went there for a year and one term and then obviously I left because the doctor signed me off and then I was home tutored. Um, I didn't even go there for the full term at the beginning. But I was speaking to her because her daughter goes to private school and I was like, obviously this isn't all private schools, by the way, but just the private school that I went to was so heavily, I mean, we were the poorest there. We were the poorest there. We were on scholarships. My parents really couldn't afford to send us to private school, but they did. They were paying off my private school education in their divorce. Um, you know, they'd be giving checks and the checks just wouldn't be 
they'd be bouncing back. And as much as I say we couldn't afford to, we, they obviously could afford to because they paid for it. But what I mean they couldn't afford to, like, they didn't get a car till I was, like, 10 because they, they scrimped for their, for us. And I look back now and I'm, I feel this, like, immense wave of guilt. I know it's not my fault because they choose to, chose to send us, but, like, I just feel this guilt of, like, I think they tried to give us the childhood that they didn't have because they were fostered and, like, had such abusive childhoods. But I just wish they'd had... I wish they'd had more money for themselves. And, like, been able to do stuff together because I can't imagine, like, they were together for over 20 years. Like, it must have been such a financial burden and strain. But also such a strain on their marriage because things were just harder. And, like, people would come around my house and be like... Like, I never even thought we were... I never compared myself to the other kids. I just thought their houses were amazing. But then when they'd come around and be like, oh, I love small houses. And I would think my house was massive until they, you know, I don't know. I went to a lovely private school from like year nine to year 12 where it was really not like that because lots of people were on scholarships and lots of people had bursaries. Um, but yeah, this school was just not that one. Anyway, I won't go into my bullying things. So I've done story times about it, but. I'd really like to know what you guys would like to hear in these podcasts because I really do like talking about it all. And yeah, anyway, I cry a lot, like a lot, more than any person I've ever known except my mum and dad. So there's the reason why. I cry so many times a day from happiness, from feeling sad, from feeling moved, from how much I love my family. I just cry. I can't help it. I definitely can't change it. But I feel so different to everyone in this world. I know that we are all different, but I've just felt that little bit more different. I'm so intense and I feel so deeply and I've only ever felt like it was too deep from people's reactions. I don't feel accepted for who I truly am, except by my family and friends. I think a lot of people feel that. I think a lot of people feel that if they ever feel a little bit too much of something, like too deep or too emotional or not emotional enough, I think we all feel like we're in this world of just feeling a little bit different. I think everyone feels like that so I yeah I think that was a really relatable thing and I think a lot of people um were saying because I said about how I know how to mask it when I'm feeling shy or anxious I think that's just the performer in me like I've done that my whole life I think it's very much from my parents as well like I know they get so anxious about social situations but then they go in there and everyone thinks they're the most confident and I just think that's just our coping mechanism. That's just the way we are. I can't believe I'm holding on to this fucking thing. Look at me like, they see me rolling. But yeah, I, I think that hiding it and masking it is just my coping mechanism for my actual introverted shyness that people don't believe I actually have. Okay, next one. Um, but yeah, I cry a lot, but I know you guys know that. I love dancing. I love loud music, but I don't drink. I hate alcohol. I don't hate anyone that drinks alcohol. I just don't like it myself. It makes me really. It makes it really hard to go out when you're one of the few people that are sober. Because let's be honest, you are so aware of everything when you're sober, and sometimes it's just not that fun when people are like stamping on you, spilling drinks on you because they're drunk and they're having fun. Fair enough. But when you're sober, it's really not that fun. Or you see people literally like gurning their face off, and you're like, "This is just not here. This is not for me. It's not for me." Um, I worked in a nightclub for three years, and I never drank, and I saw it all. And it depressed me when I was living in London. I saw men cheat on their wives. I saw men tell me how much they love their wives. Then bring um, like women that they pay for into the club. I would see men tell me how much they wanted to like give me the world or whatever. And then they actually had a baby mama at home. And a baby. A newborn baby. I just, I can't. Um, I hated men. Oh, here we go. I hated men and was single for over five years, celibate and single. I didn't trust them. I saw married men cheat. I had men promise me the world only to find they had a baby at home with their partners. Exactly what I was just saying. It took me a lot to let my walls down with my husband. I was so cold at first. I told everyone how much I, he didn't, I didn't like him. I made him seem like a completely different person and over-exaggerated the things I didn't like about him to make myself feel more protected. So that if he ever hurt me, I could say, well, didn't like him anyway. But really, I loved him. I really, really loved him, but I was so scared. Again... I really want to speak about that. I think I'll do like a podcast for every single one of these things. That's what I'm actually going to do. I think I'm actually going to do a whole week talking about these things. Because I feel like I really would love to. My parents had a very difficult and sad divorce that went on for many years. And it broke down my relationship with my mum and dad for a long time. 
it was toxic and a time in my life I've blocked out and I really don't want to relive or talk about. We went from being the most perfect family unit to all falling apart and it broke me. So many years, precious years lost that I can't get back, especially with my mum. But they're human, we all are. We aren't robots and I didn't realise that at the time, but now I do. Again, I could talk about the divorce and all those things another day, but yeah. I, I spoke to my therapist about it, about like things and you know, obviously you really open up to your therapist about things and it, it is trauma that you don't have to keep reliving like you don't have to keep going over it it's not something I can't speak about because I'm really open about everything but sometimes my mum really wants to talk about the past and go over it and and talk about it because she thinks that it helps but actually it might help her but it really doesn't help me I don't need to I say this to her as well like I say I don't I don't want to speak about the time where it was hard and it was difficult I love you I've forgiven everything that happened and yeah I, I, I love my parents to pieces they're my worlds oh my god I adore them with every part of being of my soul but yeah I kind of just wanted to share that because people really really related to it and I feel like I could definitely speak more about it but just let me know what what part you'd like me to speak about really quickly before I end I've got to say this because I couldn't believe it we were driving in the car had the two girls in the car I was sat in the back here because I was trying to keep them both awake and it was raining and we couldn't physically pull out this junction because people kept coming past, coming out, coming in, coming out. So this guy behind us was beeping, 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 but we physically couldn't come out because he couldn't see, but we had a biker that wasn't taking over and the biker was on the wrong side where he shouldn't be. Anyway, it, there was nowhere we could come. Like we couldn't physically pull out because there were cars going, 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 going. He was beeping, beeping, beeping. And he had his son in the front. He was in a BMW. Sorry, it literally cut me off. It literally cut me off. <laughs> and I've got one minute left to spare on the... Uh, on the memory card yeah so his son was in the front his son must have been about i would say 10 to 12 okay and his son's going fucking move fuck off fuck off fucking move i've never in my life i looked back and this is what i saw i have never in my life felt so gobsmacked in my life i was the most gobsmacked i've ever been i can't believe that his he was letting his son do that and his, he was sat there and I was like, are you going to let your son do that? And he didn't care. I just thought, wow. I just don't agree with that. I have an opinion on it. I don't think you should ever let your children speak to someone like that. Ever. Ever. Especially when they're not pulling out a junction. And a 10-year-old shouldn't know all that language to be say. Yes, they should know that language. Of course they're going to hear swear words. But you know what I mean. Anyway, I've got to go. I'm going to get cut off. I love you. My battery's going to die as well. But I love you. But I couldn't believe it. I was like, what on earth? Like, of course he knows that language, but he should not be doing it anyway. It must be learnt behaviour. Right, love you all.